Hey YouTube, what's going on? I just want to do a quick retrospective of the Call of Duty series since I do own all of them and the new one does come out in a couple days, so I'll just do a quick overview of, them, of the series. So the first one I'm going to do is Call of Duty for the PC. My favorite game of all time. This game came out in 2003 and it was actually developed by the creators of uh, Medal of Honor um, Allied Assault, which was a stellar game. This game set the bar for all first-person shooters. This game has incredible graphics, incredible sound, and it just plays great. Um, and unlike other first-person shooters where you're just basically a one-man army, or you're, just, you're just part of like, usually it's just uh, the Americans taking on the world. But um, you actually get to play as uh, three different um, sides in this war. You actually get to play as a United States paratrooper, a British SAS, and a Russian conscript. It's very interesting um, since the war was not won just by one side. It's a very interesting take on the World War II genre. And even the, the expansion pack, United, uh, United Offensive, was just a great game. Um, highly recommend picking this up. It's my favorite game of all time. So I got so much to say about it, but I just don't have enough time to talk about it. Um, the next one is uh, Call of Duty Finest Hour for the Xbox. Um, this one is not good. It's, uh, I guess it was supposed to be a port of the uh, PC version, but they just did a terrible job of it. This one was done by Spark, and they did a miserable job of it. The graphics were terrible, the controls were clunky. Um, avoid this one. It's definitely my least favorite. The next one is also for the Xbox. It's uh, Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. And unlike the other two, you only play as the Americans. And... Um, you only play as one division as in the Americans. It's the 1st Infantry Division, which is also known as the Big Red One. And this is a great game. It takes you all the way from North Africa through Italy to Normandy and all the way to Germany. A great game. Has really great multiplayer. Definitely pick this one up. The next one is the reason why I bought a 360, and that's Call of Duty 2. This game is incredible. Incredible graphics, incredible sounds just stellar a perfect sequel for the original Call of Duty and like I said before this is the reason why I got an Xbox 360 is just for this game and going back you do get to play as all three sides Russians British and American and it's just a great game and it's a nice interesting take on Normandy because you usually do the uh, landings on Omaha but you actually do a lesser known um, landing on Point Du Hawk, which is a gigantic cliff face, which is pretty interesting, so that's very cool. Um, the next one is uh, Call of Duty 3. Um, this one was done by Treyarch, and um, this one's, this is an interesting one. And I don't think it's as good as Call of Duty 2. It's a very good game. It has better graphics, but it, I, there's some things that are interesting about this game. Well, first of all, of course, as you see, you get to play as the Americans and the British, but you also get to play two lesser allies that no other game has ever explored. You get to play as the Canadians and the Polish, which is very cool. It's a nice to see from like other countries' perspectives. Um, this one was very good. The, mul the multiplayer was so-so, but it was pretty good. This one is... Of course, everybody knows it's a Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and the game that comes out in a couple days is a direct sequel of this game. Um, this is a good game. Personally, I always thought of Call of Duty as a just a World War II series, so it's a nice departure as uh, taking into the modern age. Even though it's not realistic, it um, doesn't take it doesn't um, no recurrent events are actually happening. It, you just take fight uh, terrorists and. Uh, I guess um, Eastern Bloc and Soviet uh, terrorists, terror cells, um, spies, stuff like that. Um, but you get to play with M16s, AK-47s, FNFALs, P90s, um, Uzis, all the modern stuff. So that's very cool. It's a nice departure. And you get to play as the SAS and the Marines, which is very cool. And the last one is... Also for the 360, and that's uh, Call of Duty World at War. And this one was done by Treyarch, like uh, Call of Duty 3. And I actually thought this one was better than Call of Duty 4, personally. Um, 
like I said, I'm a big fan of World War II. I know a lot about World War II, so it's just nice going back. And then you actually get to play in another theater. Instead of going to the normal European, you actually get to play in the Pacific Theater. So you're playing as a U.S. Marine fighting the Japanese Imperial Navy. Also, you get to play as the, the Soviet Army, Red Army fighting um, the Nazis in the final stages of World War II. So you're basically going from Stalingrad all the way to um, the Reichstag in Berlin. So that's very nice. It's a great game. I think this has the best multiplayer of all of them. And definitely the best graphics. It has an improved version of the um, Call of Duty 4 engine, so it's, I think, a, a better improvement. A lot of people say they don't like Treyarch's games, but I actually think this is a very good game. And um, the thing that I'm very thrilled about, I am getting Call of Duty, uh, for, uh, Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2, but the cool thing that comes with, well, especially the edition that I'm getting is that it comes with a, a token for Call of Duty for the Xbox. So I actually get to pay, play the PC version on the Xbox 360, which I'm thrilled about, so I get to play my favorite version of the game on the 360. So I can't wait for that. So I should have an unboxing um, coming up pretty soon of the uh, Prestige Edition, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks.